This is Pastor Tony Kemp, and uh, some time ago the Lord Jesus spoke to my heart by the Holy Spirit, and he told me to do video books, and uh, video books are free books. In other words, I do videos for 10 or 15, maybe 20 minutes in a series, and um, we share the Word of God for the benefit of uh, the Lord's people. And so if you're watching this, um, you're a believer in Jesus, you're a son or a daughter of God the Father. And uh, so we're doing this for free because we want you to have the word of the Lord. We want you to be blessed. We want you to be ministered to. And so uh, we have other video books. Uh, for example, uh, we just uh, recently did a, a series on Experiencing Jesus, which is, uh, uh, again, it's free. And it's about 30 different videos of teaching so that you can have a more intimate relationship with Jesus and the Father. And then we did a series that's 27 videos on how to know God, uh, his, uh, his voice and His presence. We have done other videos, uh, Supernatural Foundations, which is from Hebrews 6, which is uh, the revelation and the application of uh, repentance from dead works, how to have faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms, how you receive impartations of Jesus, uh, the laying on of hands, resurrection from the dead, eternal judgment, and how to become a mature believer uh, in Jesus Christ. We also did uh, a series on uh, supernatural prayers and supernatural revelations from God and supernatural manifestations and, and also supernatural freedom. And so these are all free teachings uh, just for you. And so it occurred to me that I have never done a video uh, teaching series on the subject of divine healing. And let me say right here at the outset, uh, for myself, I am not against medicine. I'm not against uh, medical interventions. I'm not against medical treatments or procedures. I think that the Lord gives us knowledge, wisdom, understanding, so that we can use whatever means God has made available to us and medical science has made available to us to get well. And so um, I'm not against medical treatments. Uh, there may be some people who believe in divine healing who are. I don't happen to be one of those people. And so uh, I'm not the person to say, don't go to the hospital. I'm not the person to say, don't receive medical intervention. Don't stop taking your medication. I am not that person. Uh, if somebody else has that conviction, that's between that individual and God. Uh, that's not my position, so I want to clear, make that clear to you here at the beginning. Uh, I am for doctors, I'm for nurses, I'm for, I'm for getting well, however that happens. And, and that also means that if you, um, if you want to do some things naturally, uh, natural remedies or, 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 or nutrition or exercise or whatever it is that will help you get well, I am for that. And so let me start this message on the subject of how to receive divine healing with a very interesting scripture. It's found in Hebrews chapter uh, 13 verse 8 where it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so when Jesus came to earth, Jesus came and he said, I did not come to earth to do my own will. He said, I came to do the will of the Father. And Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. If you have heard me, you heard the Father. And Jesus said, you know, if you know me, you've actually come to know the Father. And so Jesus came to reveal the mind of the Father, the heart of the Father, uh, the will of the Father. And so when we see Jesus, we see the Father. And so when we, look, when we are looking at a theology of divine healing, first and foremost, we need to look to the person of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus becomes uh, our theology of God's will as it relates to spiritual healing, mental healing, emotional healing, and physical healing. And Jesus is the healer. Now in connection with this, we have Exodus 15, 26. And so I just want to go ahead and just um, uh, read that to you. 
because I think it's important. Uh, Exodus 15, 26. And uh, let's see what the Word of God has to say to us here. And uh, I'm not going to use the King James or Elizabethan English. I'm just going to use modern day language. Um, but here we have um, the scripture where it says, If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and uh, give obedience to his commandments and, and keep his instructions, uh, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians from the Lord who heals you. And actually in the Hebrew, it means I will not permit any of the diseases upon you that were permitted upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord your healer. I am Jehovah Rophe. I am the Lord who heals you. And so first the scripture says here that I must listen carefully to the voice of the Lord my God. Next, I must do what is right in his sight. I must do what the word of God says. Then I must give attention to his commandments and to his words. I must follow his statutes or uh, 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 his instructions. And after I have met these conditions, uh, the Lord becomes my healer. And the, uh, the Lord uh, brings spiritual, mental, and emotional healing as well as physical healing into my body. So now when I look at Jesus, what do I see? So I can look at Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when I look at Jesus, this is what I see. I do not see Jesus taking those who can see and making them blind. And saying, this is God's will for you. I do not see Jesus taking those that can hear and making them deaf and saying, this will bring you closer to God. I do not see Jesus taking those who are, uh, can walk, making them lame so that they cannot ambulate, and saying, this will increase uh, your uh, spirituality. No, what I see is I see that Jesus takes the blind, causes them to see, and Jesus shows the goodness of the Father. I see Jesus taking the deaf, causing them to hear, and showing them the kindness of the Father. I see Jesus taking the lame, enabling them to walk, and showing them the, the goodness or the love or the mercy and the grace of the Father. And so Jesus said, I did not come down from heaven to do my own will, but the will of the Father. And uh, so when we're looking at Jesus, we're looking at the will of the Father, okay? Because the Hebrew scripture says concerning Jesus, I delight to do your will, O God. So it was the delight of the Father, and it was the delight of Jesus to bring physical healing to the physically sick. And so let's just begin to uh, look at some healing scriptures because uh, the word of God is the basis for our faith. And so allow me to, to read some healing scriptures right here at the beginning. Exodus 23, 25 says, The Lord will take your sickness away. Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 5 says that Jesus was wounded for your transgressions, that Jesus was bruised for your iniquities, and that the punishment that brings you peace was placed upon him, and by his suffering, sufferings at the whipping post, you're healed. Psalm 107, verse 20, says that God sent his word and healed them, and so God is sending his word to bring healing to you right now. And so Psalm 103, verses 2 through 4, talk about how uh, the Lord gives you these benefits, and that the Lord forgives all your sins, all you have to do is repent and believe, and the Lord heals all your diseases. And so in Matthew 8, 17, it says that Jesus took upon himself your sickness, and he took upon himself your disease. And so we want to look at uh, healing. 
And so I want to refer you now to the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And uh, I want you to look at chapter 4. And uh, let's take a look at uh, a little bit of the healing ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 4. And I will begin reading in verse 23. Here's what it says here. Jesus went throughout Galilee, number one, teaching in their synagogue. So the first thing Jesus revealed was the revelation of the word. Jesus taught in the synagogue. So first you need to be taught God's will concerning your spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical healing. Jesus proclaimed the good news of the kingdom. In other words, Jesus uh, brought the revelation of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God to the people in the now. Then it says Jesus was curing every disease and every sickness among the people. And so then it says his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to Jesus all the sick who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and um, demons, and epileptics, and paralytics, and Jesus cured them. And so, when you're looking at the healing ministry of Jesus, there are some things you have to look at. Uh, you have to look at God's grace and God's gifts of healings. Now listen, you will not be healed because you are good. You're going to be healed because of the goodness of God. And so it's not about uh, if you have been obedient enough, because none of us have been perfect in our obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? None of us have been perfect in our submission to Jesus Christ. No matter how hard you may try, you're just like me. You have flaws, weaknesses, defects of character. And you have times and periods where you fail to do everything God said exactly correctly. And so, you know, remember 1 John 1 and 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful, that's true to his nature, and he is just, he is righteous, to forgive us of our sins. And so, you know, uh, John uh, preached uh, John, the forerunner of Jesus, preached in Mark 1. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, healing from heaven, spiritual healing, mental healing, emotional healing, physical healing, the blessings of the Father are within your reach. But you have to repent. You have to change your mind. So you begin to say to the Lord, you know, now, Lord, I missed you here. You know, I was thinking wrong. I was talking wrong. I was doing wrong. And I repent, I missed you, O oh God. I shot at the target and I missed, forgive me. And the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive you. And to cleanse you from all that's not righteous. And when, and, and when the Father forgives you because of what Jesus did on the cross, uh, he cast your sins into the depths of the sea. Well, you can't see the bottom of the sea. The word of God says that the Father cast your sins behind his back. In other words, he's not looking at them anymore. The word of God says, as far as the east is, from the west, that's how far from you the Father has taken your sins away. Well, how far do you go east before you get west? You never get there. And the Father says in his word, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, he says, just like a thick cloud, I have blotted out your transgressions. And in the book of Revelation, it says, unto the Father who loved us. And, and the Father has washed you whiter than snow by the blood of Jesus because the Father has loved you and the Father has washed you whiter than snow by the blood of Jesus. And so because of what Jesus did on the cross, because he died, because he was resurrected, and because you have repented of sin and have believed in Jesus, when the Father looks at you, he sees you through the righteousness of Jesus, through the holiness of Jesus, through the perfection of Jesus, he sees you through what Jesus did for you. This is why the Bible says the Lord Jesus is your righteousness. This is why the Bible says I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is why uh, I am justified by faith, okay? Romans 5 and 1. 
I'm justified by faith, and I have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ. Justified by faith. I stand before God just as if I never sinned because Jesus took all my sins upon himself, and as the sacrifice lamb, he carried my sins away. Okay. Now, does this mean I don't have uh, flaws, defects of character, things to work on? No, I still do. Okay, but that's justification by faith. Now, as I listen to Jesus, as I obey Jesus, Jesus is going to sanctify me, spirit, soul, and body, and Jesus is going to make me holy. You know, Paul said it this way in Thessalonians. He says, I pray God that your whole spirit, soul, and body will be sanctified and made blameless to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Father knows where you are in this process of being made clean and being made holy in your life from day to day. The Father knows where you are. And so as you're seeking the Lord, as you're seeking the mind of Christ, as you're seeking to do the Word of God, the Father is ever so patient, ever so kind, ever so understanding, knowing where you are, knowing that you are going to appropriate the grace and power of Jesus Christ, knowing that you're going to grow up in Jesus as you obey the word of the Father, that you're going to move and walk in the Spirit more and more. And so the Father knows where you are. Just like if you were a uh, father or a mother, you look at a son, you say, this is their current level of maturity, but as I have relationship with them, they're going to grow up and they're going to become an adult at some point in time. Well, that's what's happening with you as a believer in Jesus. So the Father is merciful, the Father is gracious, and the Father is um, anticipating, he's expecting you to grow up and become a mature adult in his son Jesus. But in the meantime, in the meantime, he still hears your prayers. As you repent and as you grow, he forgives you. He, when he looks upon you, he's, he does not see your past sin. He sees the righteousness and perfection of Jesus. And because of what Jesus has done, he answers your prayers. And he brings healing to you. So now let's take a look at what the Word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Because Jesus moved in the ministry gifts of healings. And so we just need to recognize that healing is a gift from God. You don't earn it. You, you can't be obedient enough. You aren't good enough to get into heaven. And you're not obedient enough. And you can't earn your healing. It's a grace gift because of the Father uh, who, who just shows kindness and because of Jesus. So now we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it says here in the Word, verse 9, To another is faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And in the original language, it's gifts, plural, of healings, plural. And so Jesus had a gifts of healings ministry. And so we also see this uh, in uh, chapter 12, where it talks about in verse, uh, oh, verse 28, um, then deeds of power, the working of miracles, then gifts of healings. Okay? So Jesus moved in gifts of healings. Well, here's what I want to say to you. There's different gifts of healings. And so going back now to our scripture in Matthew 4, where it says Jesus was curing every kind of sickness and every kind of disease among the people, we look at this and we see that it says that they brought to Jesus all the sick who were afflicted with various diseases. So here's what I want to say to you. There's a gift of healing for bone diseases. There's a gift of healing for blood diseases. Jesus can heal your bone disease. Jesus can heal your blood disease. There's a gift of healing for skin diseases. There's a gift of healing for glandular diseases. There's a gift of healing for the blind to see, the deaf to hear. There's a gift of healing for muscle diseases. So there's different gifts of healings for different diseases. Let's say... Jesus wants to give you a gift of healing. Well, if Jesus gave you a gift of healing for bone diseases, that doesn't mean that that same gift will work for blood diseases. No, it's a separate gift of healing for blood diseases. 
or skin diseases. So this is why you may have a man of God who has a special gift of healing because of the sovereign grace and goodness and choice of God for the blind to see. And this man of God may have many, many uh, people with eye problems. Maybe they're short-sighted or near-sighted or far-sighted or have blurry vision or glaucoma or detached retina or or color blindness or total blindness. And Jesus uh, does a lot of miracles of healing where the blind are healed or and they see or people are healed of eye problems, whatever it is. And, and Jesus gives that as a gift. Well, this person may see a phenomenal number of people healed of eye problems. But they may see nearly no one or very, very few people here healed of hearing problems. Then on the other hand, you may have someone who I have in my mind uh, almost everybody they pray for that has a uh, problem with hearing or deafness, they receive their hearing, okay? I'm thinking of one man right now. He prayed for 50 deaf people, 50 deaf people in a row all heard because he has that particular gift of healing by the will of God in his life. Now, it's, it's God's gift, so the man can't take credit for what Jesus did, okay? So you might have another man... Um, like, for example, I'm thinking of one woman. Uh, every person that she prays for in a particular country where she is a missionary who is deaf hears. 80% of the people that she prays for as a missionary in that particular nation, they see. So she, uh, okay, so she has special gifts of healings in those particular areas. Okay, so it's just, it's just what God's grace is for uh, a person to be able to minister to others. And so, uh, uh, so I just wanted to, to make you aware of that. So then we also have here where it says that there were people who were in uh, torment. Well, in the original language, this means pains. So Jesus has a gift of healing for pain. Jesus could take away your spiritual pain, your mental pain, your emotional pain, your physical pain. And uh, Jesus can give a gift of healing for pain. And then it says right here, uh, people who were demonized. In other words, there are uh, supernatural diseases that are caused directly by the evil one. The scripture talks about a spirit of infirmity. This woman who had spinal spondylosis, she was completely bent over. Jesus laid his hands on her. She straightened up. And the scripture in Luke makes it very clear this woman had a spirit of infirmity. And when that spirit of infirmity was driven out of the woman's body, the disease died and her body was made straight. And so this is healing by deliverance. So it's a supernatural disease which requires a supernatural healing by the Spirit of God. So it's healing by deliverance. And Jesus said, in my name you'll cast out devils. This is in Mark 16. In Luke 10, Jesus said, the evil spirits are subject to you. The disciples came back and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So sometimes uh, an evil spirit is the cause of the disease and the evil spirit must be driven out of the body, then the disease dies, and the disease fades away, and the body recovers, and the person is healed by Jesus. Then it talks about those that are epileptics. Actually, in the Greek, uh, King James Version says uh, lunatic. In the Greek, it means moonstruck, which means there's a gift of divine healing for mental illnesses. So Jesus can heal a person of, of alcoholism. Jesus can heal a person of drug addiction. If a person is addicted to smoking, Jesus can take that addiction away. If a person has a problem, say, for example, with depression, Jesus can take the depression away, the anxiety away, maybe manic depressive illness or bipolar disease, various kinds of mental illnesses Jesus can take away. And then, of course, Jesus can heal paralysis. And so I just wanted to start this teaching letting you know that whatever disease there is, there's a gift of healing that Jesus has that will take that disease away. And I want to start out by giving you hope that Jesus is the same yesterday and today. And you should get ready because healing from God is coming to you through the Lord Jesus Christ.